exclusive forecast is provided by WLKY Weather. Whenever you need the forecast, just ask, what's Jay say? Chief Meteorologist Jay Cardosi here at WLKY. Hope your week is going well. Last week of July, man, hard to believe, right? Flying by. Okay, we have a couple of nice events going on this weekend across Kentucky. And we're going to start off in Madison, Madison, Indiana. We got the petting zoo and combo live music. This is uh, this coming Saturday from 8 o'clock in the morning through midday at the Bro Broadway Fountain Park. Uh, there's going to be a petting zoo. There's live music. There's also a cooking demo. And of course, this is free, so get out there and check it out. A little bit farther south on into Kentucky, the YMCA in Oldham County. This is in Buckner. We have the family mud run going on. This starts at 8.30 in the morning, goes through uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Basically what this is, this is a lot of fun, uh, a mile and a half course with mud and obstacles. Now, this is designed for kids ages four years and older and also their parents. So get mom and dad out there, kiddos, and have a great time in the mud. <laughs> Heats go off every 10 minutes, and you can purchase those tickets online. The forecast this Saturday looks absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we're going to start out in the low 60s, bright sunshine Saturday morning. Humidity will be non existent. It's going to be wonderful. In the afternoon, high temperatures in the lower 80s. Hey, Jay, tell us what do you say? Hey, Jay, what do we say? We can count on you. After two decades, we can say a lot about Jay Cardosi. We can say he has your most accurate forecast and is the Ohio Valley weather expert. But it's not about what we say. What matters is what's Jay say. What's Jay say about your weekend plans, your Little League game? His answer is still the one more people trust. Want to know the forecast? Just ask. What's what's Jay Jay say? Say? Welcome back to The Real Coffee Talk. And Miss Tina Drake has made it in again. I'm super excited to be here. Hope you guys are having a fabulous day. And we're so excited. It's finally springtime. We've come into spring. We have a great show for you today. Today we're going to have some appetizers. And in Hawaiian, they're called, or in Hawaii, <laughs> Hawaii. I love this. <laughs> they're called Pui Poo. Poo poo, and they're P U P U, but they're appetizers in Hawaii. That's how they call appetizers. So I think it'll be fun. It's, what else do we have today? Well, we're going to talk about uh, grandparents' corner. We're also going to have another one. We're going to have what? What's the other one? We're going to have trash talk. Yes, trash talk. We're going to actually trash talk today. Yeah. So we're excited about that. And a pie day. Recently it was Pi Day. It's been a while back, but I just wanted to talk about what I learned from Pi Day. So we're going to talk about that. And then we have a delicious poo poo or poo poo <laughs> for you. So we have a delicious appetizer today. And I've created it and broken it down into sections. So you guys will have the recipe. We'll have it up under the coffee talk and you guys can right. use it and make it for all of your fun adventures for spring. Now you just have to remember that uh, this is Hawaiian. That's the name for it in Hawaiian. Now, yeah. if you're if you're in in southern Indiana or northern Kentucky or southern Kentucky, Tennessee, whatever, poo poo is not. <laughs> Don't go into a restaurant and ask for a poo poo. I just thought that was such a neat added to this. And when you see what it is, it, we're using some of their uh, wonderful products. So right. we'll talk about that a little bit. But some it was, of their but some of their foods that they really enjoy eating and that they right. grow there. So it, it is really neat. It's just an odd name for us. Yeah, it'll be fun. Though. So tell us a little bit about what you feel about grandparents. And I'm going to set this up a little bit for us. I had a friend that had a grandparent, there was, of course, a set, of, and her grandfather would always buy anything that his pa or her parents would say no about. Hmm. And you know, and I remember thinking about that, and we had discussed it. What is the role of the grandparents? And that's what we're going to talk about in our new grandparents' corner. Well, I think it's, I, I think a grandparent has a lot of roles, and you have to remember, or I try to remember, 
when my grandchildren want something, am I teaching them to respect authority for one? Right. Am I teaching them to respect themselves? And is it good for them? Right. If I can say yes to all three of those, then I'm okay. But I think, I mean, I see some grandparents, um, a parent says they can't have their cell phone because their grades are bad. Right. Well, they shouldn't have their cell phone because their grades are bad. But then if you have a grandparent go buy that child a phone, oh, yeah. what have you just told that child? Right. First thing that comes to my mind is you've undermined that parent's authority. You've taught them they don't have to respect authority. When they get arrested by that state trooper, are you going to bail them out? Right, right. I mean, you know, you got to... You really need to think about those yeah. long-term effects. Yes. And where do you fit in that role as right. a grandparent? And we're not talking about grandparents raising their grandchildren. We're right. talking about what is your role with the parents. Right. And I think that's so interesting because the person that had told me about it, uh, she always had trouble with her daughter. And she would say, you know, she would look at me and say, I can't do anything, you know? I mean, I would say no. And then she would go and get that product from her, from grandpa. her grandpa. And, you know, so she's a teenager now and seems to be doing fine. But I remember wondering, what is that? You know, what, what is that, that role? That makes it very difficult for the parent. I mean, if they say no, there's no boundaries. There's no, there's no, well, there's no repercussions. Right. Somebody else got it for them. What do you do? <laughs> you know? I, the grandparents, like I said, you got three things to look at. The grandparents have those roles. They are actually the assistant to the parent. That's you true. Think? Yes. You know, they're helping yeah. guide. I know that all three of my children have had that circle, you know, of love with all of their grandparents. Right. And they've all had a great influence on my children. I'm, I'm very fortunate. My, <laughs> my, my parents didn't do that. <laughs> they would, <laughs> My children's grandparents would say, absolutely not. What did your mother say? Uh, right. <laughs> or what did your father right. say? And I appreciate that. Now, you know, there are times that I don't agree with maybe the way uh, my kids do things with their kids. But I don't go tell the grandchildren that. Right. I go to the my children and I'm like, Have you, did you think about this? Can, can we just kind of modify it a little bit so that I can do this with them or whatever? Right. And sometimes they say yes, sometimes they say no. Right. So. But you feel that you have that, cause it is nice to be able to spoil <laughs> the grandchildren. I mean, I don't have grandchildren yet, but right. all of my friends say constantly, oh, when you have grandchildren, you're going to want to spoil them. But there is a fine line between spoiling to the point of no return. Right, and teaching them to disrespect or right. not to honor what their parents' wishes are. There's, exactly. There is a line there. Especially if you know that child has been grounded from something yes. for yes. a specific reason. Reason, if they right. if they have disobeyed their parents, or mm -hmm. if they've actually wrecked the car, or their grades aren't good, or you know whatever, there is a reason, and that grandparent steps over that line. Right. You just taught them not to di not to respect authority, and I I think that's really important for kids nowadays. They have so much at their fingertips anyway. Right. If we teach them to disrespect authority, then you got issues later and especially the grandparent you know yeah. this is just because it popped in my brain the kids look up to exactly i mean my uh, mother and my mother and father-in-law are just and my dad all of them are just up here yeah. to my children so if my grand or my family said to my children that's not a worry. I'm I'm sure I would have no ruling in that. I mean, because <laughs> I, they were everything. You I know? can tell you, Anastasia, I'll just use my one yes. of my youngest grandchildren. She thinks Nana is it. And and I love that. That's great. I mean, I'm really glad that my granddaughters love me enough to think that. However, there are times that my daughter will say, Anastasia, don't do that. And what does she do? She comes running right straight to Nana. Sure. And how old is she? It was four. Oh, it didn't take her long. Oh, no, she was doing this at two, you know. <laughs> right. But when she comes to me, we talk about it. You know, why did she say no? What can happen? Will you get hurt? And she's like, I might. I said, well, then maybe that's why Mommy said no. Right. And so we address it. I mean, we still talk about it. But I don't turn around and go do it because Mommy said no. Exactly. Just exactly. because the child wants to do it. So... Now, that doesn't mean that when we drive through McDonald's, I call mom and say, can we have an ice cream? <laughs> but, 
some things you can let There's, slide. We're talking about the more greater things. Right. Yeah, when it's a discipline issue, but when, yeah, when don't, you know, don't cross that over. Yeah, when you know those parents right. have made a decision for a specific reason, for a grandparent or an aunt and an uncle or, you know, anybody to turn around and say, let's do it anyway, you just taught them to disrespect authority. And I think that's really important that they learn not to do that. They learn they need to learn to respect authority. It is it is super important and I love it. And yeah. our grandparents corner will be back. We'll have some new things and and what we're moving on to next is from you, our viewers, yeah. actually made this comment. So if you like what we said about Grandparents Day or you have some other comments or examples Send them to us because this next conversation. Well, we had one that called us. This is really bad. The parents had told the child they couldn't have their ears pierced. Oh. And the grandparent took them out and pierced them anyway. The next week, the parents were going on vacation to Florida and hadn't told anybody. Oh, no. Now that child can't get in the ocean. Oh, no. Plus, the parents have to make sure their ears are clean two or three times a day. Right, because kids don't do that. No. I think my girls had their ears so, pierced two or three times different because they couldn't keep them clean. Right. So right. the grandparent just overstepped the boundaries. Right. Because the parents said no, and the grandparents said, well, I don't care. I'm taking them. Took the child anyway, pierced mm. her ears, and the next well, the three or four days, they went to Florida, and that child could not get in the ocean. Had to sit on the beach. Aww. So now, that's not just the child. The parent, One of the parents had to sit on the beach with the child because she couldn't get in the ocean. That's sad. It was sad. So, so send them in. We love to hear your yeah. stories. We love to hear your ideas or thoughts. But our next one is trash talk. <laughs> and... <laughs> I just came up with that name, but Trash Talk and is about the trash trucks in this area. Yes. So I'm going to let her take this a little bit, but I do want to tell you where it came from just yeah. a little bit. But we had some people that messaged us on Facebook and said, would you please investigate that we see our recycling right. items. Am I correct? Yes, Amanda? you're our exactly right. recycling items being put into the trash trucks in Madison, yep. Indiana. So I'm going to let Debbie take over, but we do want you to know we're listening <laughs> and, and we will research whatever you we can, whatever right. we possibly can, we will research and come up with a possible answer or, or a right. resolution. Well, we, we did check into it, which we already knew. We, we knew that the recycling was going into a trash truck. However, it wasn't the quote trash truck. Um, there's a truck specified for recycling and sometimes you'll see a sign on the side of the truck that says recycling so when you see your your recycling go into a actual trash truck the only thing in that truck is recycling so just remember it's not being put in with the leftover roast that came out of the refrigerator yesterday that's that's not in there it's just recycling items like the paper and the plastic and things and like so that. so then they take basically they contract that truck is what you're saying that trash truck and they only have recycled items mm -hmm. in it that trash truck yeah and then they take it to recycling, for recycling. Mm -hmm. and then they go from there yes okay yeah. so after that it's not about the trash <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm sorry it's about recycling uh, but after that it's just that's just the transportation is what yes you're that truck is specifically set aside for recycling so you have to remember even though you saw the recycling go into a trash truck it's not going in with the actual trash. Like I said, your your roast is not in there, and neither is the right. You know the scraps that you threw out. Neither that, are your dirty diapers. Yeah, those anything. aren't in there. No, <laughs> we'd love to recycle them, but we just haven't figured that out yeah. yet. Those aren't in there. It's just recycling items go into that specific truck. Okay. And I've noticed now that some of the trucks actually have a sign on the side of them that says recycling. Okay. So they've tried to actually make it more aware that that truck is set aside for recycling. So I thought that was kind of neat. That is neat, and I loved it that. They so, asked that because, yeah. you know, we weren't upset. I mean, we just right. said, yeah, we'll, we'll look into this. Yeah, we had, we had one person kind of upset because they really thought that the recycling, recycling. was going to the trash, yes. the dump. The yes, dump. was going in, in the truck with the actual trash, in which it's not. Okay. It's just a garbage truck used to carry the recycling items to where they need to go so it's just a transportation yep well that's your trash talk for today <laughs> we might come back to that if you other people want to hear about it well recently like i said we talked about pie day and it hasn't really been recent but it's been a right. while you know and one thing i learned about pie day was everybody was excited 
It doesn't course, take much to get excited about pie. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't take excited. But I always look at how people, and I was talking to you about trends, and how people kind of migrate towards things, and I learned something pretty cool. I learned that we all migrate towards food. Oh, yes. I think that's a kind of, that is a nice thing, and it's also a downfall if you're well, not careful. It can be if you yeah. in, indulge. However, I found that I, I really have to, I'm not joking, Pie Day was interesting <laughs> to me because everybody on social media was like, celebrate Pie Day, I'm going to have a pie. And I know when I mentioned it to Debbie, she said, I have pie anytime I want it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's true. I just make, I'm going to tell you, I make chocolate pie pretty often. Homemade chocolate pie, not the kind you buy at the store. Now this is homemade. I make the crust, I make the pudding, I'm, you know, the vanilla, butter, eggs, yeah. all that stuff. And I can't do it now, but I used to could. I used to could sit down. I'd make two because I would sit down and I would eat one, <laughs> and then I would share the other one with the family and the guests that were right. coming. <laughs> but I could eat almost a whole pie. Could you really? Oh yeah, I could. Give me a cup of coffee and a and a pie. Oh yeah. Well, you know that I'm I can't not the homemade scratch, so when she begins to start cooking for us, then uh, Debbie will show us homemade and scratch. But uh, mine is always simple. If it's well, we're gonna, filling and throw it in there. We're going to make sure it's simple for her. We, we, have a, we have an actual pie recipe that you use the microwave for. Oh, and neat. it comes from the old recipes that you stood at the stove and stirred for 30 minutes or more, you know, getting oh, it neat. thick. So we're going to teach her how to make a pie in about 15, 20 minutes. So, I'm excited. Yeah. So we'll our next that. show, next show, we'll try to. We'll do pie yeah. next show. So for appreciation, <laughs> yes, we talked about just loving each other. And yes, the gifts are nice. But here was the thing that was the neatest part about our conversation was that if you were just dating somebody for the first day and your date was Valentine's and Day. And you asked Eric this, right? Yes, yes. yes. What would you do? Well, of course, you would go all out. Of course, I did go all out, and I and ended up buying him big, great, big flamingo <laughs> kissing balloons and took them and put them in the back of his car. But it was just interesting because love is about appreciation. I appreciate our similarities. I appreciate our differences. And if you can constantly look at that and then tie in food with that. <laughs> Because, there goes the food again. I know, there goes the food. But it was so interesting. You know, we had the, the Valentine's Day flow, and then and then we had the pie day. And I just kept thinking, wow, Valentine's Day, and a love and appreciation. And we still incorporated chocolates or cupcakes. And then we had pie day, and everybody was excited about pie day, you know? Yeah. So it was just interesting. That's why I brought the appetizer today. She's actually made us something. It's really cool. It smells great. I haven't tasted it yet, so I just, I'm sitting here waiting. Have been for about 30 minutes. So. <laughs> so, along with our love, our trash talk, we're going to just give you some food for thought. Literally. That's, yeah. We take an avocado. Ah! I just dropped the avocado. We take an avocado and we slice it around the ed in the middle. Then you'll have the pit in the middle. Okay? Can you see that? And this was simple. First of all, I want to make sure I tell you, I bought this right before we came and recorded at Aldi's, and it was like less than $5 for all of it, and we have enough to feed at least six or seven people. Oh, yeah, easy. I mean, easy. So take the avocado, slice it open. When you do, you'll have this after the pit, right? Then I just took a knife and sliced it just made little cuts in it to kind of break up the wonderful delicious part of the avocado so it looks like this once you have gotten through that you know so you slice pit cut now you take a spoon and just simply scoop it around kind of making it into its own little dip with its own little dish see and I'll show you it's like dish and then you have your avocado now we're gonna add some seasoning so I'm gonna set this over here Miss Debbie will take that and again all of this was uh, about $4.49 I mean it was under five dollars and I had to actually buy the garlic salt so I have garlic salt I have fresh cilantro fresh cilantro we have some just canned rotels now these have the whoops <laughs> That he's gonna be like, what? What? No. These have um, rotel and jalapenos. You can have chilies. And the last ones I made had lime juice already in the can. So and it was fifty cents. 
I mean, it was amazing. And this is our beautiful poo poo. <laughs> Which is it. an appetizer. She laughs every time I say it. But this is our beautiful. And what I did was I just simply dropped some cilantro in there. I put some of our beautiful tomatoes in there. And then just started stirring until I got to this part. And then I added the tomatoes and the cilantro for decoration. I think it looks great. You can add. We've got a few chips. If and they want you chips. have your own right. Yeah. If you you can, some people eat these. I know that um, this is also vegan, totally vegan. Right. So you can just eat this, or you can. I like them dip because I think it's a great party. Well, now you have your poo poo, which is from Hawaii, is the title. But the avocado dish I cannot say is from Hawaii, guys. It is from Mexico. So uh, in Mexico, we learned that. Oh, neat. And they did it in front of us. And then recently, we found a restaurant in Kansas called Bravos, and they do it for you right in front. So when I saw that, I said, I so can they make, make those it, at home? When you order that, they actually make it for you at your table. Yes, so. at, at Bravos. And, and that was the first time so that you, we had fresh. actually seen that since we were in Mexico. Right. And I said, oh my goodness, that's beautiful. I haven't seen that in so long. Well, when they did it, I thought, I'm going to go home and try that. And that's when you guys ended up with our appetizer. Quick, easy, fresh, vegan you know take, awesome how long did that take me when we were working on that oh maybe 15 minutes if maybe. it took her that long and that's because we talked too it much. took longer to get the seed out than it did for it to actually make the right, dish. right. So. and I didn't try to show you the slicing because you all would freak out <laughs> <laughs> well she didn't hurt herself so it's good. do you want to try our yeah appetizer I would like to try it because I I don't normally eat avocado I'll tell you oh you don't uh-uh I added the garlic salt. I did add that. Now you can add onions. A lot, a great deal of people add salsa. This is really good. Is it good? Mm -hmm. I think it's wonderful. I like it. And it's just so simple. Children love making these. Go ahead. I'm going to give you a little advice. When you do that, when you have kids do it, just go ahead and make the little chunks in your avocado half. And let them stir. And it. let them stir. It makes a little bit of a mess in the beginning, but this then great. it's nothing. I've, I've, Easy to clean up, easy to do. But you can make one of those for each person for we appetizers at a dinner that you have at your house. That's what we do. And then have it sit on the plates till it decorates them. And then they can add their own toppings. Because uh -huh. some people don't love tomatoes or, you know, wow. they don't love fresh onions. And Right. But yes, so there is your poo-poo for the day. She did a good job. Great. We've had trash talk. <laughs> don't forget when you see the trash truck that it's if it's recycling, it's recycling that it's day. It's actually going to the recycling. It's, it actually, you know, I got to thinking about this, and we're going to wrap it up, but that actually saves the city money, right? I'm asking, because isn't that double using a, a truck? Actually, I don't know if the truck is used for uh, collecting trash, and no, then I'm turns saying, around but they're recycling a truck is what I was thinking. Oh, I don't know. You see what I'm saying? Because I don't know. the truck, even if it was a trash, whatever, you know. But it's a good thing because it is going to the recycling. Yes, it's going directly to the recycling. You know. And so, of course, we've had we'll talk about wonderful love of food. Oh, yes. And it brings us all together. We're hoping to bring you some more food because I think that was fun. And I will work on my expertise on how to show you and not to throw uh, <laughs> tomato juice on Debbie or, or throw the avocado somewhere. You know, I will practice that. And so you guys report in what you want to see. We'll yeah. make sure that you have this recipe though. Yeah. Make, we'll make sure, sure make sure you check in. You know, if there's something you want to know about or you, you have a cool recipe, send it to us while we'll we'll check it out and see if we like it. You right. Know. Or if you have something you want us to feature. Mm -hmm. So we're so glad you spent time with us today. Thank you for being here on The Real Coffee Talk. Thanks again, and as always, we thank you for watching.